Hi, this is Real World Audio, and today is the great reward for all of those of you who asked for the recipe of how to cook your interconnect cables, which are like uh, my cable. So how do I make these strange looking DIY cables? And the recipe is super duper easy. And all you need for that is packing tape, basically the two inch or five centimeter wide packing tape. It kind of looks like this, but do not use this brand. I just picked this up from the post office. Use the 3M brand, which has a thick, a thick tape, not thin like this. It needs to be thick and strong and not yellow. So these kinds, you see, this is a yellow tape. Do not use this because that will not stand the test of time. Within a year or two, it will start to get even more discolored, much more yellow and start cracking and fall up. I mean, fall apart, <laughs> not up. It won't fall up. Uh, when you make it with the proper 3M packing tape, it's going to stand clear like that even five, 10 years later and the silver in it will not oxidize. So, so the, the, the sticky part of the tape, uh, that will not harm your silver. It will not corrode, it will not oxidize it. And, and I'm just saying that the, uh, the material of the tape is really critical uh, because uh, it's critical. And although the recipe seems extremely simplistic beyond uh, uh, any simplicity you can imagine, but coming up with them took many hundreds of hours of experimenting, trying out different materials, different tapes, wires, uh, and, uh, and really it was many years of very intense effort. And these are called the CCSSWP. That's the name we gave to these cables with Charlie. And this name stands for Charlie Chen Style Sine Wave Pattern. Um, and that's because uh, it was about uh, 20 years ago that uh, Charlie and me, we just uh, started uh, getting really, really heavily into rolling out our own interconnect cables. And, um, and basically what we did is that we built every single DIY cable recipe we found online. So like all of the TNT cables and, and, and whatnot, just everything like Cat5, whatever. We built everything, literally like uh, dozens and, and hundreds of uh, interconnects, the two of us. And then finally, uh, we started getting somewhere when, uh, when I built the simpler version of this cable. Same thing with the te packing tape, but with the silver strands just running in parallel. So there was one wire for ground and one wire for hot, and they were running in parallel. And now that was our first cable that was uh, better than, uh, than professional cables. So up to that point, we, we built many of those recipes, but and they some of them were better than the others but none of them sounded as good as uh, as as an expensive commercially available interconnect cable and that one the parallel one that sounded at least as good as pretty expensive uh, cables like mid-range cables not not the very most expensive cables but uh, it bested most uh, mid-range cables and, and we did not feel the urge that I need to upgrade my interconnect uh, more than that. However, then it was Charlie's idea that instead of running them in parallel, let's crisscross them in a sine wave pattern. And, and, and this was huge. This was uh, absolutely monumental, game-changing. And uh, before, I, I will... Uh, tell you a story of, uh, of our experience of, of an A-B test that we had that was extremely memorable between uh, this uh, CCSWP cable that we made with Charlie uh, and against 
the most expensive commercially available cable that was available at that time and it was tested in a high-end rig and uh, and it had a very surprising result and uh, since then of course we tested it and compared against many other cables and uh, many of us listened to it and we all found this favorable in every single case in every system we just tried like dozens of systems and endless combinations and it always without fail came up as the better uh, alternative so let's see how do you make it so basically first you will need a piece of wood like a long stick a long flat uh, piece of wood and print out a pattern so it should be a sine wave pattern and you have one sine wave and get another sine wave and just copy and paste them together and they look like lemons one lemon after the other so basically i printed out a couple of these on a piece of paper cut them up and then just where where one ends you see the next begins and i just splice them together and they are running blah 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 and then i gave like 76 that's in centimeters 93 centimeters 121 so at some point i just marked what is the distance how long will the cable be and when you make the cable then basically at the end you take some tape off and you uh, keep the tape or sticky end up and lay it flat on here so the sticky side will be facing up and here you bend it around so you put the sticky end down here and you can use this tape to underneath to hold the end of the sticky tape down so that it doesn't move doesn't come up and then you roll out the tape as long as you want it and then you bend the end back stick it down here and add a little loop under it to hold it down so now you will have this uh, jig and you have your sticky tape facing up and then you just get your silver wire one strand at first and you start just laying it down tick, 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 and you just softly gently make it stick to the sticking tape and it will just keep on staying there i recommend using gauge 30 fine silver and that soft annealing if you can get if not soft annealing that will be the best quality conductor for this purpose so you first lay around lay down one and then you cut up pieces of this sticky tape like tiny rectangles and on those areas where they cross each other you put a piece of tape on the sticky tape on the wire tick 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 along the whole length and then you wind the other silver wire on it and you see it will stick down everywhere but where it crosses the other one there's that piece of sticky tape between them so they will not touch and they will not short and after you lay down the second one then you get another layer of tape and put it sticky side down so basically you will have your uh, cable made with sticky sides facing together and wires in between and at the crossing points there are those pieces <clears throat> that prevent them from shorting out so that's the main part of the wire and then you can terminate it uh, with something and the best termination is uh, not what I'm showing to you uh, this is just my temporary thing and I will explain why is it temporary if you want to get the most out of it you can do it how I did it and you need a q-tip for that so this will be a DIY uh, RCA jack so you have to cut off the end with the with the soft fabric I mean the, the cotton on it not fabric and uh, and basically you need to uh, probably buy like a couple different varieties of q-tips because each of them have different centers so this will be the thing that we will use as the center pin for the RCA jack so this will go inside your RCA jack 
and and you need to find one that is the same diameter as the center pin of an RCA jack and it's hollow on the inside so you will when you have some when you do the wire I mean the cable make sure that at the end you have like a five centimeter long pieces reaching beyond the end because you will need to wind what the center pin goes inside here and at the very end it comes out and uh, and it just bends back like uh, a few millimeters so basically when you will be inserting it to the RCA jack to the female jack then there will be a single point where it comes out where it touches your female and for the negative for the outer part you get a uh, uh, a, a fish tank hose those those clear uh, plastic uh, tubing uh, that uh, and uh, get it in a size that's exactly the same size that will fit around your RCA jack and same thing just have the the negative run on the inside and then just loop it out to the outside a little bit and then this way that will give you a connectorless uh, connector so that the the wires themselves will be touching your RCA jack and there is no connectors involved no solder joints involved it's directly your conductor to the jack and that's by far the best connection you can make it has one downside you cannot connect disconnect it a million times because you will damage it so uh, so that's the reason why now I'm using that bullet plug, the Eichmann bullet plug. Uh, actually, this is the WBT version of it. Eichmann started doing it, um, which also has minimalistic uh, metal inside the connections and it mimics that scenario of using no conductor uh, to the closest degree. So you want to add as few metal as possible if you absolutely must and i have to emphasize that this is just a temporary measure for me i will go later on with the diy type back again for now i've been just too lazy to uh, to make it it's it's uh, it's a quite a bit of hassle and you have to figure it out for yourself how do you tape it how do you mount it to the end and um, it can be done and it worked for me for years uh, but it's not such long lasting it will not last you 20 years long so if if uh, that's more of a priority for you then go for a high quality and for the termination and if you want to go for sound quality then be prepared to buy a couple boxes of q-tips and now you can really uh chastise me for being a johnson and johnson q-tip salesman I think it was a Johnson & Johnson, the brand that worked for me, but I remember that I had to try like different time kinds and then when a couple years later I tried to make uh, new cables, then I found out that they changed the, the, the plastic that they used, so uh, there is no set recipe which brand to use because they are keeping changing on the material and you just have to buy a bunch different kinds and see and uh, which one will fit exactly into the RCA jack and of course it needs to be hollow on the inside to thread the wire through and you have to thread it through because otherwise it would be uh, touching your ground wire and you don't want that that's the it this acts both as a as a mechanical support and also as an insulator to keep it away from your ground so thank you for tuning in and i will share the experience of that listening session uh, in, a, in a different video and as you can tell this jig is already in a very rough shape because this is like more than 10 years old and and it survived many different movings with me and uh, i still use it uh, so we will continue from here Thank you for tuning in and have fun building your own cables. Bye bye.